My name is Bob Barlow. I'm professor of ophthalmology at SUNY Upstate Medical University. And I'm here in Woods Hole at the Marine Biological Laboratory doing research on the vision of horseshoe crabs. Now you may wonder, why would you do that? Why would you study the eyes of a horseshoe crab? Well, it's really an interesting area of research. And the reason it is, is that the eyes are relatively primitive in design. The animal is often called a living fossil because it's been around for several hundred million years without evolving. And so its eyes are relatively simple compared to our own eyes. And uh, a person named Keffer Hartline, back in the last century, in the late 1920s, came to Woods Hole, Marine Biological Laboratory, and found this remarkable animal with these remarkable eyes. And you can look in the eye without a magnifying glass. You can actually see the individual light sensors. They're the biggest in the animal kingdom. And he thought to himself, if I can see them, Without a magnifying glass, perhaps I can study them individually. And just by a stroke of luck, I became Hartline's student, and in fact, his last student, and carried on the tradition of his research. So um, it's been a fabulous, wonderful, exciting career that I've had studying just how this animal's vision works. And the nicest part about it is we actually did figure it out. So we do know how the animal's eye works, how the animal actually sees an image in the outside world, converts that image into electrical activity, transmits that electrical activity to the brain, and now we're trying to understand how the brain takes that input from the eye and makes the animal behave. This is the Laboratory of Vision Research at the Marine Biological Laboratory in Woods Hole, Massachusetts, and here we study how vision works. Actually, we're studying vision in a horseshoe crab. This is a model horseshoe crab, it's a large female. And the animal has two large eyes located here and here. These are two of many eyes, but they're the most prominent eyes the animal has. And research has been carried out on these eyes for uh, since 1920s. Now in this laboratory, what we're doing is trying to record from single nerve fibers that carry information from the eye to the brain. And here, Eric Brown has prepared an animal here you can see the eye, this animal here, and there's one over here. He's attached a chamber to the side of the shell so that you can isolate a single or several optic nerve fibers that carry information from the eye to the brain, which is located deep inside the animal. Now, after Eric prepares the experiment, we're going to place this camera on top of the animal's shell. We call this crab cam, and the camera will be videotaping what the eye is seeing. At the same time, we're recording what information the eye is sending to the brain over just one or two nerve fibers. Now, the eye communicates with the brain with about a thousand nerve fibers. We're just going to record from one or two. And by doing so, we can try to decipher the neural code the eye sends to the brain, the animal's eye sends to its brain, when it's seeing underwater. And here we analyze the results. Now, this is Dr. Fred Dodge, who's developed a computer model for helping us understand the neural code for vision. And this is the video taken with the underwater camera. And if you listen very carefully, you will hear the ticking sound that goes down when the animal passes by that dark object. The reason the sound, the ticking sound goes down is that's the optic nerve response to this dark object. And of course, when there's no light because the dark object is there, the eye ceases to respond. And that's the neural code we're trying to study that the eye sends to the brain when the animal's underwater seeing. That large dark object that you see the animal moving past back and forth is about the size and shape of a mate. And the most surprising result that we have discovered doing this experiment is that this eye of the horseshoe crab is designed to detect something just like this underwater. We know the animals use their eyes to find mates, and now we've discovered that the eyes are designed to detect a mate better than anything else. And our vision actually is, is less sensitive at night, so we're not like horseshoe crabs that way. But horseshoe crabs have a remarkable ability to increase their visual sensitivity at night almost a million times. And that's about how much darker it is at night than, it is, than during the day. So the horseshoe crab has developed this amazing ability to change its visual sensitivity 
so much at night that it must think it's about as light as it is during the day. Now we're trying to figure out just how active they are during the day and at night. So you can see small little horseshoe crabs, four of them here, and we're tracking their activity as a function of time of the day. And they're inside this dark box. We can't open that box or else we'll destroy the experiment. So you can see that there are little red crosses here that uh, are isolated over each animal, and the computer is tracking when they move and when they don't move. So it turns out they move at night. So now, knowing they move at night, we wanted to know whether their nighttime motion is synchronized with their increase in visual sensitivity at night. So for that, we come over here. So Jennifer Esch is tracking their visual sensitivity. We'll open this up just briefly to show you the small animal sitting inside. In here, we have a horseshoe crab. We have one electrode placed directly on the eye and a second electrode placed directly off the eye. We are measuring the response of the eye to light. Here you can see a recording of the response of the crab's eye to a light flash that's sent to the eye every 15 minutes. During the day, as you can see, the animal's response is much lower than at night. And every night, the eye becomes much more sensitive to light. This animal has been kept in constant darkness for a long period of time. Uh, but still you can see a change in visual sensitivity during the day and during the night. Our goal is to understand human vision. That's what our goal is. But this is a small step in that direction. And in the process, actually, of doing this research on the horseshoe crab and understanding the changes in his vision from day to night, we had an unexpected insight about human vision that may actually give us some information about the causes of age-related macular degeneration. So you never know where your research will take you.